thank you very much for the invitation to speak here. And, um, you know, I will come to this. I, what I can provide to you is a very high level view uh, on the relationships between uh, fair data, which has been around for a decade now, and this emerging um, um, you know, technology space of uh, artificial intelligence. And, you know, there's this amazing coincidence that uh, a wonderful acronym like FAIR, which of course is very technical, uh, data that's findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable for machine, works also perfectly well in a, in a world of AI where we can also say data and services that are fully AI compatible or full, fully AI ready. Um, so let me try to um, lay out the relationship between these things because uh, it may help um, at a strategic level on how to proceed with, with moving in the, in the field of AI. And I've organized my presentation here uh, very much according to the title of the, uh, of the workshop today. So first I'll start with opportunities. I'll move to challenges and then uh, give a view looking forward. Um, and of course, this is... Uh, uh, some of the leading questions, which I thought were excellent uh, from the ASA Talk website. Um, and I think it's worth just kind of mentioning a few of the issues here. So, because they're, 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 uh, they're very, very well captured here. So, what are the essential elements of data curation uh, that can make data more AI ready? Um, there's also these issues around, you know, uh, a very, in some cases, a very complicated set of decisions around standards, especially ontologies and vocabularies and metadata schema um, that could improve data interoperability and, and machine readability, even for, and especially for AI systems, um, how AI can potentially be used to promote the FAIR principles, which is an interesting uh, twist on this. We might be thinking of FAIR as a way of promoting AI uh, but if AI gets really good, can we also expect AI to promote FAIR and maybe get positive feedback loops going? Um, and then this mitigation of biases in AI models, you know, the biases are, are you know, one of the recognized bottlenecks for AI, even among the, um, the big AI companies right now that are producing these. So they see that as a major liability and might FAIR have something to say about them? Um, and you know what we saw from uh, Fluvio's last presentation. Again, you know, really, I I'm so impressed with how well uh, your community is is already adapting to to uh, AI systems uh, and, and deploying fair principles in that regard. Uh, this is a, a poster that I'm I'm reprinting here that I you know, that Barry Hardy was kind enough to share with me. But I was just so impressed with um, the the degree of technical thinking already in your community. Uh, and I think indeed knowledge graphs are going to be central um, as, as kind of, you know, where we want to and how we want to represent data, um, but then also leading to really precision AI after that, really trustable, trustworthy AI uh, if we have knowledge graphs. So there's definitely a lot of opportunity here, um, but how does this relate to the FAIR principles? So just you know, the quick overview, uh, this idea of FAIR data emerged in a workshop at the Lorenz Center in 2014. Uh, a decade passed, a very active development and, and, you know, in some cases, very, very um, outspoken commitments to FAIR. Uh, so in 2024, the beginning of this year, uh, we had another workshop at the Lorenz Center commemorating this past decade of very active work and we were trying to also look ahead in the next 10 years and AI was a part of that um, um, that discussion in January. Uh, but if we go back to 2016 when the fair principles were originally published, if we go back to that to that commentary, we can see that the fair principles themselves explicitly were meant to be enhancers of the ability of machines to automatically do F, A, I, and R. So I've really now uh, quite recently gravitated to this word enhance um, in, from the original paper, because I think that's the key uh, to understanding how FAIR can contribute to AI, and then subsequently how AI may be contributing to FAIR. Uh, these are, of course, the FAIR principles that were published in 2016. 
Again, very technical, uh, all about findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable. Uh, when we boil it down, and I, and I would say I, I can only kind of boil it down after 10 years of work, uh, I think FAIR is really addressing three broad issues. Computability, so FAIR data use knowledge representation languages to create, for example, knowledge graphs uh, that reduce or eliminate ambiguity. And I would say also to reduce or eliminate hallucination in AIs. Uh, FAIR is also about trustworthiness. So FAIR data have rich provenance behind them, which provides the evidence for the source of information or the source of claims. Uh, and this provenance can include all kinds of uncertainties or error estimations. Um, but beware that that rich provenance is usually also a large amount of data or metadata. Um, so great if it can be handled by machines. And then the equitability aspect. So fair data make explicit the conditions for the reuse of data. Um, and so equitability can be technologically ensured in some cases uh, when the data and metadata are, are made machine actionable and fair. Um, and then, you know, finally, just to kind of round up the this first decade of fair. Uh, from my point of view in the GoFair Foundation, uh, we've been privileged to see all kinds of developments, all kinds of technologies and methods. So there's certainly, and, and I'm showing here on the left, uh, the fair practices and training that have emerged uh, in the GoFair context. There are many other uh, applications and, and programs out there where you can learn good practices uh, towards fair implementation. Um, on the right side of the screen is the what I'm calling fair orchestration. So even if you should have uh, really richly annotated data in a knowledge graph format, you still need to provision some kind of access control. Uh, you still want to make sure that this information is um, at some kind of endpoint that is searchable, it's registered, it's findable. So I'm just pointing out here that over the years, um, a number of really interesting technologies have emerged sort of explicitly targeting fair implementation. Um, and including at the bottom of the, the slide, I, I, I mentioned data visiting here, really key, I know, even to ASATOX, which would be how do you make even privacy sensitive information fair? And uh, we can do that through data visiting techniques. Um, okay, so what about the challenges then? Um, here, I, I consulted ChatGPT4 um, asking for challenges to the implementation of AI. And this is what ChatGPT uh, said, that in the creation of ChatGPT4 itself, uh, there was still quite some manual effort on filtering data, so trying to remove um, noise, low quality, duplicates, etc. Uh, there's a constant struggle against bias and, and other ethical concerns, and there's, um, I think, most critical to companies like OpenAI right now, um, how do you use information on the web in an appropriate way uh, within respecting copyright. Uh, so these are the major issues, and of course these are like major lawsuits that could be coming for uh, the AI uh, companies right now, is kind of this um, indiscriminate use of copyrighted material. What I can say is that the fair considerations that I mentioned just a moment ago, I think address these three issues perfectly. So the filtering is all about computability. You know, if, if things are duplicates, that's fine, so long as we know they're duplicates. But we want to be able to reduce ambiguity and noise. Um, we have to increase the trustworthiness of information. We have to understand where the information is coming from in order to estimate things like bias um, and, and to be able to evaluate ethical concerns. And then the equitability aspect of FAIR is really all about getting a handle on the licensing and the reuse conditions for data. So I think all of this information, this computability, trustworthiness, equitability, is something that can be made really explicit and actionable, uh, especially when you have knowledge graphs available. So then what would be, you know, given, given all this, um, how does uh, AI and FAIR look uh, going forward? And I think the, the answer here is pretty optimistic. So at the moment, we have a large amount of legacy data out there, and AI systems are being trained um, on that legacy data, and uh, they're useful 
because there's just so much data and, and the machines are learning um, on this huge volume. But there are still issues of noise and bias and copyright, and it's really well recognized and are, are seen as major liabilities. If we interdict the, cre you know, the, the training of AI um, with, let's say, a, a verification step leading to, let's say, a smaller subset, but a very high quality fair data, then we can really get a handle. We can explicitly reduce that noise. We can gain trust and, and gain equitability in that data set. And that will enhance, again, coming back to that definition from the 2016 paper, we can enhance the AI itself. And I'd be willing to call AI trained on fair data, fair AI, um, meaning that that AI could more reliably orchestrate FAINR. So it could find the resources that you need. It would know how to access them. It would know how to interoperate with them and know very clearly what the reuse limitations are. Um, at the same time, that FAIR AI could generate outputs that are also in FAIR formats. And I think one of the, um, the virtues of FAIR is that we don't have to aim for one single format that it is FAIR. Um, in, in fact, we can have a, a whole spectrum of different formats. So long as they're machine actionable, we believe they would also be registered then as FAIR. So we look for AI to also create FAIR data. Uh, but we might actually ask our AIs um, to help us, or if not completely take over, some verification of legacy data itself. And of course, that can always be validated um, uh, uh, and, and confirmed by humans, but um, I think there's a, a potentially a big role for this. And so if we take this um, diagram, then what, what I could say is these are all positive feedbacks, that once we have fair data, we can get more fair and trustworthy AI, which could then be used to create more fair data. Um, so I just stole the slide from uh, Julio, and uh, you know he was mentioning that there could be possibly a very long journey ahead of us here. Um, if we can jumpstart those positive feedback loops, maybe we can try and shorten the journey, make it um, a little bit more practical for our purposes in the immediate time frame. Uh, one, one last comment. Um, Again, going back to the you know this this decade of fair that we've had from 2014 to 2024, that was mostly in the context where AI was uh, kind of a, a very specialized discipline or science fiction story. So in in this last decade, fair as an acronym really had this connotation uh, of, of being you know, uh, something that's, that's kind of just or equitable or uh, fair in small letters. Um, I've just returned from last week at a um, from a National Science Foundation meeting in Washington, D.C., called FAIR in Machine Learning, AI Readiness, and Reproducibility. Um, and what I was impressed with there, and, and I suppose if I joined you today, I, I might hear the same, um, people were very much um, excited about this idea of data that is AI ready. And what I saw in the participants there was saying, yeah, I want AI ready data. They would say this with an enthusiasm that I never saw about FAIR in, the, in terms of you know, the small letters FAIR. So I, I suspect um, uh, you know, we, we really have a, um, that AI will really create even a, a new and more powerful uh, reason to enter into this whole business of, of data verification. The good news here is that the acronym is perfectly applicable uh, in the in this new era of AI, right? That fully AI ready is a perfectly fine acronym as well. So with that, I'd like to say thank you very much for again for the um, chance to speak here. Um, good luck in the future uh, with with the um, um, with the risk assessment and verification on that. And um, if there's uh, an interesting questions, I'm happy to take them.